Now, you know that something's going down in Iran right now. And actually, the way that I found out about it was I was browsing TikTok. Yes, I'll admit it. Sometimes I browse TikTok. I just want a little bit of bite-sized entertainment. And I ran into a video of a young woman claiming to be from Iran. She spoke very good English. And she was talking about these struggles that she faces as a woman in Iran. This, of course, uh, rang alarm, bar, alarm bells in my head, having been exposed to a lot of feminist propaganda in favor of regime change, knowing historically that Iran is declared an enemy of the United States by the United States, not by Iran, but by the United States, knowing how Iran has been sanctioned, knowing how we've been bullying their country, I immediately knew that something was up, and I immediately knew that whatever sort of dissent is going on in Iran is probably not legitimate and platforms like TikTok are full of this manipulative content which is designed to get you to sympathize with the people of Iran especially the women of Iran when in reality things are not as they seem and I'm going to show that today very quickly so this is a video now if you search for Iran on TikTok this is the first result right and this is a woman talking, and we're going to listen woman, to her. Or you were born of one, you need to stop. Today, in 2022, you as you watch this on your smartphone, women are being executed in Iran for not wearing a hijab. This is Masa Amini. She was walking down the street with her brother at 22 years old when she was taken captive by the morality police for not wearing her hijab correctly. They told her that she would need to take a mandatory one hour class to learn. Okay, the morality police? She was taken ca captive? Taken captive by the morality police. Can you, can you, do you really think there's morality police going around in Iran? Listen, if a woman was walking down the street, you know, showing it all in America, we have ways of dealing with this, okay? And it would certainly not involve beating the woman. And this woman, Masha Amini, okay, you want to know what really happened to Masha Amini? Well, let's see what really happened to Masha Amini right here. There she is. So she's not wearing a hijab and some woman tells her, hey, put on that hijab, right? She gets upset, starts to faint falls over. Here they are, here's paramedics taking her. Nobody touched her. Nobody touched her. So this story that this woman is telling, this is clearly manipulated. This is clearly not the truth. Learn how to wear it correctly and instead they beat her to death and then lied about it. Now every they beat her to death. Really? Was that a woman getting beaten to death? Really? I've seen sports injuries uh, that are that are a lot more. <laughs> I've seen sports injuries that are a lot more realistic looking than that that were faked. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't see how you could the spin it that way. To be taken seriously, but just to offer some perspective, here in the United States, we throw a fit when our child is cyberbullied. Can you imagine them walking down the street, being arrested and kidnapped for following an already inhumane law and then being executed for it? This vicious and violent act catalyzed thousands to protest in the streets of Iran, where unfortunately more are being executed and harmed, including, and this is a trigger warning, this. 10 year old girl so you mean to tell me that in this society which has sharia which reflects the religion of the people in this country in this society people are suddenly going to rise up in the masses beating the people that go against their religious beliefs are you telling me that this is insane right she's making things up and yes, there are indeed people in the streets in Iran, and I can guess exactly why. The reason is because Iran is being exposed to color revolution tactics. They are making the country poor. America, 
is sanctioning Iran, trying to make it poor. America is trying to keep Iran defenseless, telling them you cannot develop nuclear weapons. You cannot trade with who you want to. Okay, you need to be sick and poor and weak. And when the people of a country are subject to this type of situation, what do they do? They get upset. And the moment that you convince somebody who is upset about having a poor economic status that it's the fault of the government, not that hard to do. People are looking for something to blame and the government seemingly controls everything. So there you go, right? There's your color revolution. This is not about women's rights. It is not. And this child that she's pointing at here, this is an emotional manipulation tactic. She's not saying the name of the child. She's not saying, you know, what actually happened in this situation. This photograph looks like somebody's covered in ketchup. Okay? It looks like a cheap horror movie. As an act of protest and in the victim's honor, thousands of women are cutting their hair. I will say it is hard sometimes to find the words to describe what it's like to be a woman today. So thousands of women are cutting their hair. I think you should cut your hair. I think that would be that would be a good statement, right? But it, of course, you spend way too much money on but your I hair to do that. I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like to be a woman in Iran. So, you know, it's so hard being a woman in America. I mean, just look at this woman. Obviously, she has such a hard life with all of the surgeries she's gotten. I mean, look, maybe she does have a hard life. I mean, look at up her, her nose. You can see maybe she picks her nose a lot and it, and it bleeds, right? So maybe she does actually have a, a problem of some kind. You know, I've been staring up her nose this whole time. The government is retaliating on the people of Iran by shutting down their internet any moment now. They already shut down Instagram, so it's our job to raise awareness and help. Yeah, they're shutting down their internet any moment. I doubt it because every single society on this earth that is remotely modern completely depends on the internet for their own infrastructure. I think that the reason why they would shut down Instagram is because Instagram has propaganda like this on it that's getting the people to go out into the streets, so they shut it down because it became a problem. In whatever way we can. Please create content and raise awareness for those victims. I'll conclude this video with a bold yet humble opinion. You know, the president of Iran is scheduled to be in New York for the UN General Assembly, and frankly, I don't think any country or individual should be allowed to serve in the United Nations. So she's now saying that Iran should not have a seat at the table at the United Nations. Doesn't she know what the United Nations is supposed to be about, right? If there's actually something bad going on in Iran, well, there kind of is, right? But it's not authentic. It is a color revolution. You know, it is a bunch of people that are angry and dissatisfied having their anger and dissatisfaction channeled into something less than authentic through artificial means in order to destabilize the country, right? But if a country has a problem, it should have a seat at the table at the UN. And this should enable the country to gel with the international community. On the contrary, on the contrary, the UN is used as a tool to oppress countries like Iran because it is dominated by America and Western countries uh, primarily, right? And all of the, the members of the UN will vote in line with what America says because if they go out of line, they're going to have a problem. So the UN isn't serving its purpose, but in an ideal world, I think all countries should be part of the UN, especially the ones that she is expressing concern over having poor human rights or being a terrorist state or some kind of crazy thing like this. I think that a seat at the UN is the remedy for that problem, right? It's the remedy for that problem. So she is pushing the American imperialist agenda to further Iran's isolation and not to give them any semblance of a voice. And the fact of the matter is that this propaganda video is only the tip of the iceberg. And if you browse TikTok, just browsing random content, right? I don't actually look at that much political content on TikTok because it's not a particularly political platform. But 
It recommended me videos of women talking about Iran and women pushing this manipulated narrative onto me, right? And this is going to happen to a lot of people. So we need to speak up and not make content in support of these protests and color revolutions, of course, but make content calling out these bullshit clips on TikTok. And remember, TikTok is the number one platform in America, at least. TikTok is the number one video app. So... With that, I'm going to conclude this video by saying, guys, um, don't believe what you hear, okay? Don't simply believe what you hear. I know it's hard. I know we want to trust what we hear, right? You think that God is maybe sending you a message, or maybe you just think that uh, you possess the logic to figure out that you have heard something and it's true or it's false. Well, we need to actually look into what we hear if we want to believe it, especially in politics where a high level of rigorous thinking is required. These TikTok videos are no good.